Today I'd like to continue our series on spirituality and uh, praying with Scripture, uh, and particularly to uh, look today at a passage from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 24, and our theme will be praying uh, with the Incarnation, the idea of this great mystery of Jesus taking on human flesh. What does this mean to us in terms of our prayer life? Uh, and how can we grow closer to Jesus in prayer, uh, exploring this theme? So this is Matthew 1, uh, verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save the people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took his wife into his home. Beautiful passage from Matthew that really describes to us a lot about this feeling of what was going on in the life of Joseph at that time, and how Joseph reacted to it, to this amazing news of incarnation, that God was going to be with us. The first thing we notice in this passage is there is a betrothal, that uh, Mary is betrothed to Joseph, which was a first step in a process of marriage. Uh, the idea was that you were committed to one another, but that you would take time to get ready for the living together part of marriage. So you, you were together, but you, in a way, were not living together in, in the same uh, place. Uh, and so Mary is pregnant. We don't know how this news was communicated to Joseph, but uh, he realized that she was pregnant. Uh, and she was pregnant, the scriptures tell us, through the Holy Spirit. So this was not a result of intercourse between Mary and Joseph, but it was the action of the Holy Spirit. So naturally that would be difficult for Joseph to understand and would be very upset. And so according to the, the law of his time, since Joseph was a righteous man, meaning he would follow the law, uh, he could either have... Mary and whoever was involved in this situation with Mary, uh, the, the other person, uh, could have them uh, subject to the law, the, the punishment being stoning, or he could do this quiet divorce. And he was more sensitive. He loved Mary, uh, and he didn't want to expose her to any difficulties. So he was going to do a, a quiet divorce was going to be his option. Uh, but uh, when the angel came to him, uh, he's having a dream, and the angel comes, and the angel says, do not be afraid. So naturally, the first thing, when you have this experience with an angel, this messenger from God is going to be fear and what's happening, and uh, this is crazy. Uh, am I dreaming this? Is it reality? Uh, all, all of these concerns. The angel comes in down and says, do not be afraid, and you, Mary is going to have this child through the Holy Spirit, and you are to name this child Jesus because he's going to have a special role, and that role will be to save people. He's going to be a savior to save people from sin. Uh, and the prophecy will be fulfilled that this child will be born of uh, a virgin, a young woman, uh, and that his name will be Emmanuel. Uh, and Emmanuel meaning God is with us. And after Joseph awakes from this dream, he is strengthened in terms of what he should do. Uh, he ditches his old plan about a quiet divorce, 
and instead takes Mary into his home. So again, we see the character of Joseph here uh, as being a holy man, someone who wants to follow what God wants. Uh, I'm sure he doesn't completely understand it when the angel says, well, she's conceived a child through the Holy Spirit. Well, how do you do that? Uh, all of those the different reactions we would have to this. Uh, but he's really reflecting on uh, this is a gift from God. This is uh, the way God wants to communicate uh, about God's love to us. And so he, he respectfully follows what God wants. Uh, and so his prayer is a prayer of acceptance, uh, a prayer of amazement, a prayer of being overwhelmed, but a prayer of being very thankful for this gift that God will bring into uh, Joseph's life. Uh, and so when he uh, is praying, uh, he's praying in thanksgiving, so we join in that prayer with the un uh, about the incarnation. We, we join together in prayer. Uh, and we pray in thanksgiving for this gift that God has given us, and this gift of Jesus being with us, that God uh, loves us so much that God wants to share this amazing gift, uh, the gift of his son, uh, the gift of new life, uh, the gift of love, the gift of relationship. God wants to share all of this with us. And of course, our first reaction is with me. <laughs> I, I'm not worthy of this. And it's not a question of being worthy. It's a question of acceptance, accepting God's generous love towards us. So let's pray in thanksgiving for the incarnation. Jesus, we love the way you come into our life. We love the many ways that you incarnate yourself in our lives. You have taken flesh among us. You have become one of us and one with us. And help us to join with you to see the amazing gifts of love, of kindness, of generosity that you want to share with us through becoming one with our human bodies, one with our human flesh. You, Jesus, are one with us. And we thank you for that gift, that amazing gift of your love, of your generosity, of your caring for us so deeply, so intimately, and so personally. And so we ask this prayer in your name and in great thanksgiving, with great rejoicing, both now and always. Amen. God bless.